Hello, BCPS families. We are so excited to share Tiger Math with you today. This week, fifth graders have been reading informational texts and talking about text structure. After you've finished listening to the story, we will share some questions for you to think and talk about. Then you will see a writing prompt. You can use this writing prompt to respond to the text. You can then share your written response with your teacher. Finally, you will see some project ideas for enrichment and ways to have fun interacting with the book. Enjoy! Today we're going to be reading Tiger Math, Learning to Graph from a Baby Tiger by Ann Whitehead Nagda and Cindy Bickle. And a special thanks to Scholastic for letting us read this story. Tiger Math is a story all about a tiger named TJ. The story starts with TJ as a young cub and follows him through adulthood. As you listen to the story, I want you to pay attention to the many different text structures the author includes. Remember, some examples of text structure include cause and effect, problem and solution, sequence, description, compare and contrast, and question and answer. Introduction. It is a very special event when a Siberian tiger is born because there are so few of them left in the world. This book will use graphs to tell the story of TJ, a Siberian tiger cub born at the Denver Zoo. Just as words can tell a story, so can graphs. Graphs are math pictures that make it easy to see and understand information about numbers. This book will introduce four different kinds of graphs, picture graphs, circle graphs, bar graphs, and line graphs. If you want to read the story of TJ the Tiger without the math, you can read only the right-hand pages of this book. Then, to learn more and see exactly how TJ grew, you can look at the graphs on the left-hand pages. We're going to be looking at both. Okay, let's start with the graph called Tigers in the Wild. Picture graphs use pictures to make it easy to compare things. The image above is a picture graph that shows how many tigers are left in the wild. Each tiger drawing stands for 500 tigers. To read this graph, choose a kind of tiger from the names along the bottom. Then count how many tiger drawings are in that tiger's column and multiply that number by 500. This graph makes it easy to see that there are fewer Sumatran and Siberian tigers than there are of other kinds of tigers. Bukra, the Siberian tiger, was going to have a baby. The keepers at the Denver Zoo had already placed a video camera in her den so they could check on the mother tiger without disturbing her. When the cub was born, they watched Bukra and her baby on a TV screen. Bukra was a good mother, licking, nuzzling, and nursing her new baby. The cub, named TJ, weighed only three pounds and looked tiny next to his mother, who weighed 250 pounds. TJ's father, Matthew, was even bigger than Bukra. He weighed 350 pounds. TJ would have a lot of weight would have to gain a lot of weight to be as big as his father. Tigers in the wild. Another way to show how many tigers are left in the wild is to use a circle graph. A circle graph or pie chart shows what part of a whole something is. The whole circle represents all the tigers left in the world. This graph makes it easy to see that there are a lot of Bengal tigers and very few South China tigers. There are so few South China tigers left, about 40, that they couldn't be shown on the picture graph on page 8. They would have been just a small piece of a tiger picture. 
When TJ was six weeks old, the zoo veterinarian gave him shots and weighed him. The cub weighed 10 pounds. When TJ's father was six weeks old, he weighed 14 pounds, four pounds more than TJ. Even so, the little tiger was healthy and strong. Sheila, the tiger keeper, had trouble holding him still while the vet examined him. The feisty little cub never stopped wriggling until Sheila brought him back to his mother. I'm going to stop for a second. After reading this page, I can tell that the author is using a compare and contrast structure. The author compared TJ's weight at six weeks old to his father's weight at six weeks old. TJ weighed less than his father at this age. I am now wondering, is it okay that TJ doesn't weigh as much as his father did? Is everything okay with TJ? Is everything okay with TJ's mom who feeds him? Let's keep reading to find out. TJ's weight. A picture graph can be used to show TJ's weight. This is a picture graph like the one on page eight. On this graph, blocks are used instead of pictures of tigers. Each block is equal to one pound. Each column shows TJ's weight at a particular age. At birth, TJ weighed three pounds. At 10 weeks old, TJ weighed 13 pounds. Every day when Sheila came to the zoo, the first thing she did was check on the tigers. Bukra, protecting her cub, always snarled, spit, and bared her teeth at Sheila. TJ snarled just like his mother. One morning, Bukra didn't snarl at Sheila. The mother tiger lay on her side, completely still. TJ was mewing and pushing his mother and trying to nurse, but Bukra didn't move. Without any warning, she had died. The zoo veterinarian examined Bukra and discovered she died from cancer. Now who would raise this special baby? Most of the time, mother tigers take care of their cubs alone. Matthew couldn't take care of his son. He didn't know how. Hmm. After reading this page, I now know why the author may have compared TJ's weight to his dad's on the last page. Something wasn't right. TJ's mom was too sick to feed him. That's why he wasn't gaining enough weight. TJ's weight. Another way to graph TJ's weight is with a bar graph. This bar graph of TJ's weight looks a lot like the picture graph. Each colored square equals one pound, just like the blocks in the picture graph. To read the bar graph, choose an age from the numbers along the bottom. Then follow the colored bar up until it stops at a line. Follow that line to the left to find out how much TJ weighed at the age you have chosen. So at 10 weeks old, I'm going to follow the red bar all the way up until it stops, head over to the left, and I can see that at 10 weeks old, TJ weighed 13 pounds. Sheila took TJ to be raised by the staff at the animal hospital. The vet was worried when he examined the cub. TJ was not as big as he should have been. The cub was 10 weeks old and he weighed only 13 pounds. Because Bukra had been sick, she hadn't been able to feed her cub enough. Cindy, a veterinary assistant at the hospital, put TJ in a cage and gave him a bowl of ground meat mixed with milk. Ignoring the food, TJ walked to a corner of the cage, curled into a ball, and didn't move for hours. The next day, he was still curled up in the same spot. He hadn't touched his food. The hospital staff was worried. The 10-week-old cub hadn't gained much weight since his six-week checkup. If he didn't start eating soon, he would lose weight, which would be bad for his health. Did you notice how the author wrote this page as a cause and effect text structure? 
She wrote, because Bukra has been sick, she hadn't been able to feed her cub enough. She also wrote, if he didn't start eating soon, he would lose weight, which would be bad for his health. The author was showing the cause and effect relationship between TJ's sick mother and TJ's health. Comparing Matthew and TJ. The vet checked to see how much TJ's father had weighed as a cub. He compared TJ's weight with Matthew's weight at the same ages. At six weeks, Matthew weighed four pounds more than TJ. At 10 weeks, Matthew weighed six more pounds than TJ. Cindy made a bar graph like this one to compare the tiger's weights. The red bars show TJ's weights. The black bars show Matthew's weight. This graph makes it easy to see that although Matthew and TJ weighed the same amount at birth, Matthew gained more weight than his son did in a 10 week period. This is making me wonder why? Why were their weights so different? We know about TJ's mom was anything else going on? It was TJ's third day at the hospital and he still hadn't eaten. When Cindy entered his cage, he snarled and showed his teeth, threatening her because he was scared. She put some meat on a wooden stick and placed the meat in his mouth. TJ spat it out. The next day, Cindy tried giving him strained meat from a jar. She thought that TJ might like human baby food. He spat that out, too. Cindy and her staff began to fear for TJ's life. Five days had passed, and the tiny cub had not eaten anything. Everyone agreed that they had no choice but to force TJ to eat. Dr. Kenny and Dr. Combray, wearing jackets and heavy gloves, held TJ still while Cindy used a stick to place meat at the back of his tongue. It was quite a struggle at first. The small tiger was all teeth and claws. Finally, TJ swallowed seven meatballs coated with dried milk. Cindy hoped that TJ would eat on his own after he got a taste of food, but the cub still refused to touch the meat in his bowl. To help TJ survive, Cindy and the veterinarians continued to force TJ to eat. Hmm. Did you notice the text structure on the last two pages? If you were thinking problem and solution, you were right. What was the problem? Yep. TJ wasn't eating. In fact, it had been several days. What were some of the solutions the author described? They tried to mix meat with milk. They tried to place the meat in his mouth with a stick. They tried to feed him meat from a jar. They tried human baby food. And finally, they placed meat on the back of his tongue. Let's take a look at the graph. Cindy used the zoo's computer to make a line graph of TJ's weight, like the one below. Line graphs make it easy to see how something changes. This line graph shows how TJ's weight changed as he grew older. Each point on the graph shows how much TJ weighed at a certain age. The line that connects the points make it easier to see the whole story that the graph tells. Cindy's graph told a disappointing story. TJ was losing weight. The tiger cub had lost one pound during his first few days in the hospital. So if I'm looking at the graph, I can see that at 10 weeks old, he weighed 13 pounds, but then at 11 weeks old, instead of gaining weight, he lost one pound and weighed 12 pounds. On the next few pages, I want you to pay attention to the sequencing structure that the author uses to tell this part of TJ's story. 
Remember, a sequence is when events are told in order. You might hear words like then, next, or after a few days, or on the 11th day. This clues you in that time is continuing to pass. On the 11th day, TJ ate two meatballs on his own. When Cindy gave the cub a rubber toy, he batted it around. Then he set a meaty bone next to the toy. TJ immediately started chewing on the bone. Everyone started to feel more hopeful. For a few days, TJ seemed to be feeling better. He ate whatever Cindy gave him. Then, suddenly, he got fussy. When Cindy put a meatball in his mouth, he spat it out. He smashed the rest of the meatballs and buried them in the hay. To keep his weight up, the hospital staff forced the cub to eat again. All the care and hard work paid off. TJ gained weight at last. Here is a line graph of both TJ's and Matthew's weight from birth to 12 weeks. The red line is TJ's weight. The black line is Matthew's weight. At 12 weeks, TJ weighed a lot less than his father did at the same age. Now the graph told a more hopeful story. Looking at the line graph, Cindy could see that TJ had gained one pound between 11 and 12 weeks and three more pounds by 13 weeks. TJ was weighed frequently. By 13 weeks of age, the frisky cub was not cooperative about getting on a scale by himself. Cindy had to hold the tiger and step onto the scale. Together, Cindy and TJ weighed 126 pounds. Cindy put the tiger down and stepped back onto the scale alone. It read 110 pounds. By subtracting her weight from their combined weight, Cindy was able to figure out that the tiger cub now weighed 16 pounds. Cindy was relieved when the tiger cub let her hand feed him on a regular basis. Now he would gain weight more quickly. TJ's favorite food was beef heart rolled in dried milk. By the time he was 14 weeks old, he weighed 19 pounds. The cub was gaining weight at a steady rate, and the vet was pleased with his progress. Hmm. What sequencing words did you hear on the last two pages? I heard on the 11th day, then, for a few days, by the time he was 14 weeks old. Have you noticed that the author has used many different text structures all within the same text about TJ? All of these text structures help us, the readers, better understand what is happening in the story. The author asked us a question. We knew she was going to answer it. The author named a problem. We could expect to read about the solutions to that problem. She started using sequencing signal words like on the 11th day, and we knew to expect time to move along as she told us TJ's story. Hmm. Let's finish our story. How much TJ ate. This bar graph shows how much meat TJ ate each day during his first weeks at the hospital. At 11 weeks, TJ got very upset if he was forced to swallow more than 10 ounces of meat a day. By 13 weeks, the cub was eating a lot more. As his appetite increased, so did his weight. As TJ grew more comfortable with the nursery staff, he became more playful. He played hide-and-seek with Cindy and Denny, another veterinary assistant, on the zoo's grounds at night. The tiger cub would hide in the bushes and wait patiently until Denny got close to him. Then he would leap out, grabbing Denny's leg with his paws. Sometimes he would sneak up behind Cindy and pounce on her. Tiger mothers teach their babies how to hunt by playing games like this. 
the tiger quickly learned to open the nursery room door so he could join his human friends in the kitchen. He also learned to open the refrigerator door by pulling on the towel hanging there. One time, TJ even helped himself to a bag of meat. By the end of TJ's stay at the zoo hospital, he wanted company all the time and cried when he was by himself. After learning to live with humans, TJ had a new challenge. Hmm, a new challenge. That's a clue the author just left us. Challenge is another word for problem. The author is telling us to pay attention to the solutions she's about to write about. After le learning to live with humans, TJ had a new challenge. He had to leave the hospital return to the tiger exhibit in the zoo, and live by himself. Cindy visited often. Sheila, the tiger keeper, hand-fed him so that he would get to know her. TJ played games with Sheila. Sometimes he climbed on a rock and then pounced on her when she entered the exhibit. TJ was afraid to go outside in the tiger yard at first, so Sheila and Cindy went with him. Soon he was having a wonderful time, shredding bark from trees and watching birds and zoo visitors. During the next few years, TJ grew a lot. How TJ Grew This is a bar graph of how much weight TJ gained from birth to four years old. TJ may have gained weight very slowly just after his mother died, but by the time he was one year old, he had gained nearly 200 pounds. And by the time he was four, he weighed a healthy 500 pounds, even more than his father did. The graph finally tells a happy story. When TJ was two years old, he was moved to a zoo in Billings, Montana, where they had a brand new tiger exhibit, but no tigers. TJ was just what they needed, a big, sleek, healthy tiger weighing 300 pounds. He continued to thrive in his new home. Several years later, when TJ was four years old, Cindy went to visit him at Zoo Montana. She watched the tiger splash around in his pool. After she called to him, TJ came over to the fence and shuffled, which is a sound that tigers use as a greeting. Normally, tigers shuffle only to each other. But if a tiger in captivity is especially fond of a person, he will shuffle when this favored person approaches. Cindy knew that TJ still recognized her. Cindy was amazed to see how big TJ was. The tiger keeper at Zoo Montana estimated that TJ weighed 500 pounds. TJ had grown bigger than his father. Here are some pictures of TJ over the years. Let's start on the left. There's TJ hiding at the hospital. There's TJ pouncing on Cindy. At the bottom on the left, he's playing hide and seek with Denny. On the right, TJ at Zoo Montana and TJ resting on the rocks. We hope you enjoyed listening to the story. Listen as I read you these questions. Then you will have a few moments to share your answers with someone near you. How does the author organize the text? How do the text features contribute to the text organization?
How does the text structure support the main idea of the story? Grab a piece of paper and a pencil and jot down this idea for writing about the story. In your opinion, which type of graph was most helpful for the veterinarians and zoologists caring for TJ? Why? Here are some more ways you can interact with the story at home. In the story, veterinarians and zoologists used scales to track TJ's weight. See if you can find a scale in your house. Make predictions about the weight of objects and use the scale to determine the actual weight of the objects. Do some graphing. Create a bar graph to show the temperature each day this week. Create a picture graph to show the number of steps it takes you to walk to different places in your neighborhood. Do more research on Siberian tigers. Use the digital content tools on BCPS1 to help you with your research. Zookeepers spend their days caring for and training animals. Practice being a zookeeper by caring for and training any pets in your house. Feed them, take them for walks, or clean their cage or litter box. See if you can train them to do any new behaviors. Thanks for joining us for Tiger Math. We hope to see you again soon.